Uh, unfortunately, I have to start with some very sad news, uh, and that is that we're reporting a further five deaths in South Australia. Uh, one person aged in their 50s, one in their 60s, one in their 70s, uh, and two in their 90s. Uh, so we obviously are very sad uh, with this number that we need to report today, and our condolences are with their family uh, and their friends on this very sad day. Uh, yesterday we had uh, a, an, a slight increase again in the number of um, new positive cases in South Australia. In fact, 4,274 positive cases uh, were, um, were reported yesterday, a further increase in hospitalisation up to 164. Uh, again, this is still well within our capacity uh, to process here in South Australia. Uh, we maintain 16 people in ICU, uh, but we now have two of those people who are on ventilators. Uh, as Professor Spurrier said yesterday, about 80% of those people that are in ICU uh, are not vaccinated. Uh, and so my strong message again to South Australians is we've got to uh, get ourselves vaccinated. Uh, we've got to make sure that people have had not just the two uh, doses, but when they're eligible, the three doses, the two original doses plus the booster, uh, so that we can make sure that we keep South Australians as safe uh, as possible. Uh, yesterday, we had a further uh, very significant increase in the number of tests which occurred across South Australia, about a 20% surge uh, to 24,784 tests uh, through SA Pathology and the two private laboratories uh, in South Australia. Um, we understand there were very short waiting times. My strong message today uh, is that there are still short waiting times in, I think, every uh, site except for Hampstead. So we're just working through that one uh, at the moment, but very short waiting times. So any single person who has symptoms in South Australia today, please go and get yourself tested. Um, testing is one of our you know, frontline defences against this Omicron outbreak. Uh, I should also um, uh, point out that we've had a small uptick of just two people, two additional people who are COVID positive working uh, in SA Health. And so that takes that, to, that number to 358. Uh, and so that takes the total uh, number of people in SA Health who are either positive or furloughed, not able to work because they're close contacts, to 608. Uh, again, that's 608 out of 53,000. Uh, but that number is steadily increasing and it's one that we're very concerned about. We want to manage as closely as we possibly can. Unfortunately, the vaccination statistics haven't come through for the day yet. They're being extracted from the Australian Immunisation Register, so we'll get that out as quickly as we uh, possibly can. There were two directions uh, changes uh, which were put in place uh, yesterday, and that was uh, making it mandatory for the third dose uh, for two sets of workers, uh, one in aged care and one in disability. So that now complements the previous direction that was put out for all healthcare workers in South Australia. So it's now going to be mandatory for all healthcare workers, all aged care workers and all of those in the disability sector to not just have the two doses uh, to be fully vaccinated but to have the booster as well. And we're giving people to the 29th of January to make sure that they can comply with this. And I do need to give advance warning that we are very strongly considering uh, making it mandatory for the booster in other sectors as well, including uh, childcare and the education uh, sector. These are really important frontline uh, people in South Australia. And so we do uh, definitely uh, want to make sure uh, that people are as protected as possible. Uh, we had another uh, COVID ready committee meeting this morning uh, and there is an AHPPC meeting going on at the moment. In terms of the COVID Ready Committee uh, in South Australia, we were doing our further preparation uh, for the introduction of uh, rapid antigen tests for those close contacts. Uh, so this will uh, be in place and operational uh, on Thursday morning next week, probably mid-morning we'll switch uh, on the, ab the, the ability for people uh, to get a rapid antigen test uh, free uh, from SA Health uh, and use that on day one and day six uh, if they do get a positive result, of course, uh, this will then uh, negate the requirement for them to go and have a further PCR test. We want to preserve the PCR testing capability for those people who have uh, symptoms. Um, can I say um, that there was a small uh, IT outage today? 
uh, with our systems down at Wayville in the vaccination uh, clinic. Uh, every person that was booked in though was processed. We had to take some of the details manually, but they'll be uploaded to the Australian Immunisation uh, Register manually. We're just trying to work out what the reason for that outage was. Uh, a couple of hours, uh, it's been restored. Now we apologise for any uh, inconvenience. We have been reporting uh, some outbreaks in Aboriginal communities uh, in South Australia. We were very concerned about two positive cases at Amata, which is right up very close. Uh, to the Northern Territory border. Uh, what I can report to you today is that there are about 300 people who have been, uh, have been tested. We have 270 results back already and all of them are negative. So we're very pleased and very hopeful that we got this uh, just in time. But I can also uh, report that we have another two cases in Caniba uh, on the west coast, far west coast of South Australia. And we also have one further positive case uh, in Indulkna, where somebody from Adelaide moved back there recently. They've now uh, returned a positive uh, swab and so we have brought them uh, back to Adelaide and we're testing the Indulkna community. So these are particularly vulnerable communities because of their remote location uh, and so we're working with the local uh, health providers as well as putting our rapid response team in place to support them. As I said, um, the AHPPC is meeting at the moment. Uh, Professor Spurrier presented uh, to us this morning about what they would be discussing and in particular uh, we are concerned about food supply chains across Australia, not necessarily impacting massively here in South Australia at the moment but we want to stay ahead of the game. We are concerned uh, that as more and more people across the country become infected or are close contacts of people uh, that are infected that we don't supply, sl slow down those food supply chains. We have seen uh, some situations interstate which do look worrying. We want to make sure that we stay ahead of that uh, here in South Australia. So that AHPPC uh, meeting is taking place uh, at the moment. So that's the, uh, that's the extent of the information. I apologise that we don't have the uh, full vaccination um, statistics for you today. What I do know uh, is that there are plenty of appointments. Uh, the very best thing that you can be doing at the moment is to go and find one of those appointments, uh, either for your first dose, if you haven't had it, your second dose if you haven't had it, and also uh, make sure that you can get that booster uh, when you become uh, eligible. We are opening up thousands of additional appointments and people will be able to go on uh, line and refresh. Uh, they might have checked two days ago, there wasn't one convenient for them. Uh, there certainly are more and more appointments opening up, both within our mass vaccination clinics in South Australia, but also, very importantly, through our GPs uh, and uh, the pharmacy network across South Australia. So um, that's the end of my report and I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah, well, as I said, I don't think we have an acute uh, shortage here in South Australia. I've been to several supermarkets this morning trying to eye it for myself because uh, there were some um, concerns expressed, especially from interstate, um, but there were certainly no sh shortages where I was uh, this morning. Obviously, uh, we are mindful that a lot of workforces across the country, whether they be in food distribution, our transport sector or our own health sector in South Australia, there are many people who are furloughed at the moment. There are many people who are close contacts and they can't go to work. It's a delicate balancing act because if you uh, free them up to go back to work, you're going to be accelerating the spread of the disease. And so there are no easy choices with what we face uh, at the moment. And this is one of the reasons why the AHPPC, the Australian Health Protection Principle uh, Committee for the country, uh, is meeting today to give us some advice on this specific issue. Yes, yeah, so there are different um, there are different approaches that are being considered, uh, where people may use rapid antigen tests basically to go back to work uh, early, keep themselves as isolated as possible during uh, that period. But that's something that we could uh, have to consider in South Australia down the track. But as I said, we don't have the acute situation that they're already facing in some other states of Australia and around the world. We're very fortunate here uh, at the moment. I think we have around about 25,000 active cases. Uh, across South Australia at the moment, but many more who are close contacts and so we're monitoring uh, them very uh, carefully. But workforce is one of the big issues. As I've said right from day one, there are two uh, major issues that we're dealing with. One is from a health perspective and the other one is 
uh, a, a basically a workforce issue and if we lose too many people from our workforce we won't have the ability to support those people in their, in their health care and other essential services. Okay. So we've been very clear on this since the 26th of uh, December. If people already have their bookings in place, then we think that they should honour uh, those bookings. We're probably uh, less convinced that people should be thinking spontaneously about uh, upping now and moving around the state. We are in the middle uh, of a global outbreak in terms of the Omicron uh, variant. We're seeing the numbers uh, today skyrocket. Uh, in New South Wales and also in Victoria. We haven't seen other states report yet, but uh, we're very hopeful that the restrictions that we put in place on the 26th of December is going to sort of curve uh, our uh, exponential growth that we're seeing in other, other places at the moment. But we've really got to be mindful of uh, trying to move around a lot less and coming into contact with uh, far fewer uh, people. We've encouraged people to work from home. We don't take these decisions lightly. We know that it has uh, severe impacts upon CBD businesses when we ask people to work uh, from home and so we are asking people to be mindful of those CBD businesses and if they can support them in other ways uh, we would be very grateful. But um, the reality is uh, Omicron is with the world at the moment. Uh, nobody is going to be uh, spared and so no, no jurisdiction is going to be uh, exempt and so we've got to do what we can to flatten that curve in South Australia. The good news for South Australia is we are seeing a lot lower hospitalisation rate uh, with Omicron than what we saw with Delta and that's very, very pleasing. Um, we're seeing now less than 1% of cases, less than 1% of cases resulting uh, in hospitalisation. We're well within our capacity uh, here in South Australia. We are seeing the numbers in hospital uh, increase and that's a combination of people that are being ad admitted to hospital because they do have Omicron uh, versus those that just happen to have Omicron who have uh, been admitted for uh, other reasons. But in total uh, today we see that number uh, in South Australia uh, getting up to 164. So that's a 20 person uh, increase on yesterday but certainly within our capacity. Yeah, well, obviously, um, we've got an arrangement with our uh, COVID positive patients that need to be hospitalised at the moment. We're uh, using the Royal Adelaide Hospital as, uh, if you like, the workhorse uh, of our hospitalisation uh, capacity. We also have the Women's and Children's Hospital uh, for those uh, women who are in a maternity uh, arrangement. Uh, and so we do have some within the, that 164, there are a number of uh, women who have come in to give birth who are COVID positive. So again, they're not there because uh, they are COVID positive. They're there to give birth, but they happen to be COVID positive as well. But we've uh, basically presented them all in total. And then the third one is the Women's and Children's Hospital, which are taking uh, our children in South Australia. We currently have seven uh, patients in the Women's and Children's Hospital, so an uptick from yesterday. Um, but again, three of those seven are not there. Uh, because uh, of their COVID condition, they're there for other reasons. Oh no, we've significantly upgraded our capacity. So you would have remembered that when we were planning to open the border on the 23rd, uh, when Delta uh, was the dominant variant, we created the equivalent of 393 additional beds in South Australia, or the equivalent of 393, because some of them were in our system, some were in the private system, and some were a greater emphasis on hospital in the home. So that has been put uh, into place. But since then, we've put the ban on elective surgery and, and essentially banned anything other than category one and urgent category two. This frees up a huge number of beds within the public system, but it also frees up beds within the private system when we've been able to contract those beds, and in particular their ICU beds, which we're not utilising at the moment. But part of what we will ultimately be doing is decanting uh, some non-COVID patients uh, from the Royal Adelaide uh, into uh, the private hospital setting so that we can further free up our capacity within uh, the Royal Adelaide Hospital. Uh, we're very keen uh, to not only use the private hospitals uh, for uh, their uh, ward beds and their ICU for non-COVID patients, but also their workforce to help us uh, with the mighty task of vaccination, which is in front of us at the moment. How many people have any estimate about the true number of cases in South Australia, including people who are testing positive on the front end, can test, if there's no way of recording those 
No, there definitely is a way of recording it and people are recording that on a daily basis so they can go onto the SA Health website and they can enter those uh, details in there. We're still uh, requiring people to have a confirming PCR test, but that will change uh, as of next week. So if people get that positive uh, PCR test, we're just deeming them uh, to be a COVID positive uh, patient. Look, you, it's a good question because I think there's been a lot of reports around the country that whilst we see big numbers, uh, in New South Wales uh, and Victoria, most people are saying this is uh, significantly under the actual uh, positive rate over there because there are very long uh, testing lines and very long uh, turnaround times for getting those test results. Uh, I'm of the opinion that we have a very low level of under ascertainment in South Australia. I think that we are capturing all of that uh, data. There'll always be a slight uh, error. Uh, in reporting because some people uh, you know, won't go and get themselves tested so we will uh, never know. But I think in South Australia uh, it certainly uh, doesn't occur to me that we are uh, out, of, out, out of whack with uh, when we look at those statistics between the number of cases, hospitalisation and ICU admission. Yeah. No, it's, it's obviously pretty light at the moment. We're just putting those systems uh, in place because at the moment the requirement is if you have a positive rat test, you still need to go and have that confirming PCR test. But look, the decision was made at National Cabinet that we will all move away from that because we want to conserve and preserve our uh, PCR uh, test uh, to make sure uh, that we can apply that to people who have got symptoms going forward. So um, this was mainly done to assist uh, the states uh, on the eastern side where uh, they have uh, well, they've gone well above their testing capacity. Um, I know there have been some delays in South Australia but they pale into insignificance compared to some of the delays that are being experienced uh, interstate and so there is a significant under ascertainment uh, in those jurisdictions. I just don't believe that's occurring in South Australia at the moment. Yes. Yeah, so there was a report yesterday about a single GP and when we followed that up they placed an order. Their first uh, order was received uh, in accordance with when they placed that order. Their second order uh, would be received on or before the 14th and the third order uh, there wasn't uh, that, that was reported by the media to me yesterday. They, the feds hadn't received that. So um, look, certainly uh, we haven't received any information that would suggest that there are any uh, hold-ups whatsoever. Uh, Lieutenant General J John Fruin, we spoke to yesterday, he said we've got two million uh, paediatric doses in Australia, they're being distributed on a per capita basis. We've certainly got ours in place uh, here within SA Health. Um, if there are any specific issues with regards to uh, the uh, GPs, well then we can follow that up. But the one that, we were put, that was put to us yesterday, we followed it up and there was a pretty simple explanation. No, I don't have that. And to be quite honest, and I apologise for this, I only received that information literally sitting in the car on the way uh, here. So uh, one person in their 50s, one in their 60s, one in their 70s, and two uh, in their 90s. Are they from Metro Adelaide or the region? No, I don't, I, unfortunately, I just don't have any further details on that. Going back to the workforce yes. issue, we understand several child care centres have been forced to close because they can't be staffed during school holidays. What are working parents going to do with their Yeah, look, it's a very tough one, and we're going to see further... Uh, disruptions right across Australia uh, because of Omicron. We're seeing it already uh, here in South Australia. Uh, it's still at a reasonably low level compared to interstate. We're likely to see a lot more of it. There are going to be disruptions because workforces are being disrupted and it's much better uh, for uh, people uh, who are infected or close contacts not to be in the workforce. That's going to slow down the acceleration uh, of this disease and it's definitely going to preserve lives. So as inconvenient as it is, uh, we are in the middle of a, a global outbreak of Omicron. It's highly transmissible and we've got to take actions uh, to uh, protect ourselves. And so I don't think anybody should be uh, thinking that life over the next six or eight weeks is going to go on exactly and precisely as uh, it was sort of six or eight weeks ago. Uh, it is going to be very dif different, but I know that by working together, we are going to be able to get through this like we've got through pre previous uh, waves uh, of this disease and I just make it very clear I still believe unequivocally uh, that if you have to be somewhere uh, during a global outbreak like this South Australia is one of the safest places on earth to be at the moment. Just to 
Yes, so as we've previously reported, uh, as of next week, what will happen is when people are, are identified as a close contact or self-identify as a close contact, they will uh, get in touch with SA Health. SA Health will get down the details. They will then send them a QR code. They can take that QR code to a number of sites that we're currently setting up across metropolitan and country SA, collect two rapid antigen tests that are self-administered, and then they're required to enter that uh, information into the SA pathology uh, site so that we can uh, get track that information. Data is absolutely crucial uh, during a pandemic. You would have seen a very significant surge in Victoria uh, today with their numbers, but some of that surge uh, to 51,000 was a, a, a backdating of some of those, the, the Im implementing of those rapid antigen tests. So whilst it is still a uh, a big increase in Victoria. It's probably not as large as those numbers first suggest, but again, a very significant surge in New South Wales today to 45,000 positive cases. Seeing Queensland um, push back school because they want to get kids vaccinated. They haven't pushed back school. They've only suggested that that's one option that they're considering. What about here in South Australia? Considering pushing back the start date or school from home? I haven't got anything further to add to the questions that were asked on this yesterday, um, but I'm happy to go through it again. Uh, the reality uh, is no state has finalised their situation for the resumption of Term 1. Uh, yesterday, the Queensland Premier said that they would uh, consider uh, pushing back at the start by up to two weeks. I think all states are considering their position. Uh, at last week's National, oh, sorry, yes, last week's National Cabinet uh, meeting, there was a general discussion. Ideally, we would like to get uh, students back on day one, Term 1, but only if it's safe to do so. Professor Spurrier made it very clear uh, yesterday at the press conference that she would love to see all students back day one, uh, term one. Uh, we were the first state to return students uh, to school after the very first uh, days that Australia lost uh, to uh, the coronavirus back in 2020. Um, we have had excellent school attendances. In fact, we've had the fewest days lost for schooling of any uh, state in Australia during the pandemic uh, so far. But we also want to make sure that it is safe, safe for students and say for uh, teachers. And we've uh, committed yesterday at the press conference that we'll be making that clear as of Friday next week. What's the situation in the southeast? Are you aware of that um, outbreak in the Nerecourt Abattoir evolving? Yes, so we obviously gave an update on that yesterday. I don't have anything further uh, to add to that today. Uh, but what I can say is that, look, we are very concerned uh, about outbreaks amongst workforces, both uh, within the red meat uh, and the chicken industry here in South Australia. Um, when it gets into a workforce, uh, it is very difficult to uh, keep it out. And this is what I mean. There are going to be uh, disruptions to so many sectors uh, during this. We have to be able to pivot and move very quickly uh, to make sure that we can keep supply chains open. And the hospitality industry, they were desperate to at least be able to have a 50% capacity this weekend. That's not going to happen. When, no. when can they increase the 50% again? Look, we haven't, even got to the, uh, we haven't even got to the peak in South Australia at this stage. Look, I don't have any update today on consumer spending in South Australia. Obviously, last financial year, we had the strongest growing economy in the country. Uh, through the September quarter, again, we surged further with our state final demand even higher than the previous uh, financial year. We, we've obviously got challenges at the moment. Uh, we are of, uh, like we did when there were lockdowns interstate, what we saw in those jurisdictions was there were often a, a change in spending or a shift in spending. People uh, moved uh, to other uh, categories. Um, but I don't have anything uh, specific to update today, but I'm happy to follow that up. And just on, always track the first dose, second dose. Will we get the third dose um, percentage in South Australia, that number, on a daily basis? I think that we do have um, a, a track on the daily. Um, uh, if, if, if not, I'll follow that up and, and give it to you. But look, the, 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 the complexity with reporting third doses is that not everybody is eligible. So it's, it's hard to say, well, this is the percentage that we've got. Well, there's a whole pile of people that are not eligible yet. It's like when we move from 16 plus to 12 plus, um, there's a sort of a change, but there's many people, sort of every day, the eligibility changes because it has to go roll on from four months from their second dose. But we'll try to get some information that gives a clear picture. What I am pleased about is that we are getting many thousands of those doses into arms every single day. Uh, in fact, we've uh, surpassed 10,000 
uh, booster doses uh, every day for the last four days. I don't have those statistics for today, but I'm happy to get them to you later today. Yeah, so look, the, 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 there are sectors which are disproportionately hit, there is no uh, doubt about it. Uh, in terms of uh, the sectors which are most hit, obviously it's CBD, uh, it's tourism, it's hospitality and it's of course uh, uh, the fitness sector at the moment. Uh, we've just put out a range of supports for those uh, who have been adversely affected, in fact up to 22 uh, thousand uh, dollars. That money is already flowing into their bank accounts. This is the seventh uh, business support package that we put in place uh, in South Australia. Um, we are seeing um, many businesses uh, who have uh, had to really significantly scale back their operations and we we'll obviously look at other ways of supporting them uh, into the future but we've only just announced uh, a very significant uh, support package. In fact I think we're the only state uh, so far this year has put further support into uh, that small business sector in South Australia. Look, these are tough times. These are extraordinarily uh, tough times. I don't think anybody can expect uh, that we're going to be just sailing on like we were before Omicron uh, raised its ugly head. But my focus at the moment is getting South Australia through this as safely as possible, putting supports uh, in place to uh, protect those uh, jobs and industries which are most adversely affect and hopefully come through this as quickly as possible and have that bounce out the other side. I mean, I appreciate that um, you only just learned about the flight of guests, but it is a concern, I think that's a record here in South Australia, that many guests. We've heard Omicron's mild, but is it worrying to see that many fatalities in the country? Look, obviously uh, we're devastated with any death in South Australia and to have five having to be reported on the same day uh, is extraordinarily sad. And this is why my very strong message to all South Australians is we've got to take this seriously. Uh, of those people in ICU, uh, as of yesterday, 80% of them were unvaccinated. The strong message to people is do, uh, the, do everything you can to tell your friends and your family uh, to have their, those doses, to get that boost, to protect themselves, their families, their colleagues at work, the entire state.